Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Tuesday, April 7th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, a look back at Fukushima's radiation trail. Then, the bill to ban water guns on school property. And the smear machine attacks Rand Paul. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs> I mean, these are villains, folks. It's not like they don't know. They're running the scam. With the slogan, Defeat the Washington Machine, Unleash the American Dream, Rand Paul began his 2016 presidential campaign, formally announcing it today. And of course, the Washington machine is not very happy. The empire strikes back. We're going to talk about what happened today. But first about Rand Paul. They say he took aim at his fellow Republicans. Of course he did. Railing against his party for succumbing to special interests and framing himself as a fiercely anti-establishment figure who would appeal to a broad swath of the electric. That's the way that Politico put it. They quoted him saying, Too often when Republicans have won, we have squandered our victory by becoming part of the Washington machine. Yeah, we're looking at you, Boehner, McCain, Graham, McConnell, the Republican leadership. It's a Republican establishment that has betrayed us right after the election. Of course, they didn't do anything that they campaigned on. We've got people who are camping out at Boehner's office saying that they're not moving on, he's not moving on the abortion bills that he promised he would do. And of course, they're going to get arrested. They're pushing back that way. They're not going to change and do what they said they would do. Immediately after the election, they repudiate everything they ran on. He says, if we support a candidate who is simply Democrat light, then why bother? What is the point? Well, of course, the empire, the Washington establishment, doesn't like that. They don't like somebody that's pushing back. It's clear that the greatest threat to them is Rand Paul. And so what do they do? The warmongers are coming after him the very day of his campaign. They launch a million dollar ad campaign to lie about Rand Paul. An article on Infowars.com, Steve Watson points out that they are slandering Rand Paul and he calls them warmongers exactly. They're people who are selling war. Just like a fishmonger is somebody who sells fish, these guys are the war sellers. He says, an establish, as establishment Republican front group that is set to plow $1 million into a slanderous advertising campaign designed to depict Paul as dangerous and standing with Obama. Yeah, right. According to a source watch, the group was founded in 2008 specifically to receive donations for John McCain's hawkish presidential campaign, quote, as much as possible up to the limits of the law. And of course, the law allows quite a bit. The law also allows quite a bit of anonymity as to what those sources of money uh, are. They say the fear-mongering ad concludes with images of civil unrest and a mushroom cloud. Where have we seen that before? As Alex Jones pointed out today, we've seen that, of course, before with the campaign of LBJ versus Goldwater, trying to paint Goldwater as the man who would unleash the nuclear bomb. And, of course, that ad only ran once, but the media ran it over and over and over again, firmly establishing it in the minds of the voters. They're trying that same trick. Of course, John McCain, who's intimately involved with these war sellers, it's ironic, isn't it, that the biggest, war biggest warmongers would uh, show him as someone who's going to give us a nuclear threat. He knows how well that worked. He's old enough to understand that. Someone as old as McCain, as he said, he's old as dirt, but what's worse than his age, and his age isn't a problem. You could have an honest person who is old, that's not a problem. The problem is, is that he's a bitter, angry, and I would say psychotic kind of Dr. Strangelove figure. He and Lindsey Graham, who we are told is contemplating a run, so maybe that's what this is about. Also, YouTube went after Ron Paul, or maybe somebody used YouTube to go after him. Maybe it was the bots that took it down, but we have seen this happen with the InfoWars site numerous times. We've had a lot of false, malicious claims to shut us down when we went after uh, Sandy Hook, talked about what was going on there. The idea is, even if this is going to be put back, the idea is to break the news cycle. That's the real thrust. Censor him while it's announced, on the day that it's announced, try to break that momentum. So they mount a million dollar slander campaign and then shut down his side of the ad. And of course, that is uh, on YouTube, reported by the Washington Post. Now, one of the things I think that's wrong with this country, of course, we've talked about this many times, 
And that is the way the police are trained in this country. I would say not trained in this country. Let's take a look at two stories that came up on the Daily Mail. Two car chases, two different countries, and two very different outcomes. Now, in the first case, we've got an American tourist in Thailand. And what happens is she's it's a very chaotic uh, traffic environment there. They drive on the different side of the road there, being a former uh, British influence there. They don't drive on the same side of the road as Americans. So she goes down a road, she gets confused, and she starts panicking. At that point, the American woman, after she drove the wrong way, she started accelerating. She hit someone on a motorcycle, then she kept going. She hit other vehicles, 13 at last count. She even hit some pedestrians. What did the police do? Did they pull out guns? Did they shoot her? No. Actually, they did pull out some guns. They shot the tires to stop her. They shot out three of the tires before they could get her to stop. She apologized. Uh, of course, the crowd was extremely angry. A lot of the people that she had hit, uh, that she had nicked, were very angry. The police had to protect her from the crowd. Nevertheless, they kept their training. They didn't shoot her. And she said uh, she had simply panicked. But what happened in, in America when this happened? Well, we see in the same uh, publication, Daily Mail, we have a case. Of course, this happened a couple of years ago. But on the same day these two things come out, we have a situation where you've got a couple of people driving a car. They are going to be pulled over by the police. They panic. Uh, why would they panic? Well, it seems like in America we have a history of killing people for no reason. These two individuals were doing nothing other than not pulling over. It turned into a car chase. It lasted for about 20 minutes. And at the end of it, the two occupants, who were unarmed, were killed. Now this cop, this has happened a couple of years ago, is on trial. Only one of the 13 police who were shooting is going on trial. This particular individual, though, stood on the hood of the car and fired 15 shots through the windshield in a gunfight that killed the unarmed couple. They say he's now facing two counts of manslaughter. And what happened with this? There was 137 rounds fired by the 13 officers. After the car had stopped, after everybody else had stopped shooting, this individual, his last name is Brello, jumped on the hood of the car and fired shots into the passengers through the windshield at close range. The, the passengers had never fired any shots back at anyone. Now, through this, he had fired a total of 49 rounds that night. It involved 60 police cars. 104 officers were involved in this. But they went and they turned this into a Bonnie and Clyde episode. For what? These were not serial killers. These were not bank robbers. These were not people who had shot up bank after bank like, like Bonnie and Clyde. Why would they shoot their car 137 times? Why would this individual fire 49 shots? 15 of them standing on the hood of the car into the windshield. It's the way they're being trained. And when we look at this, we have to ask ourselves, I think, do we really want to have an army of police that are trained like this? This is a systemic problem. In this particular case, this individual is being tried for manslaughter, but we see over and over again that individuals who shoot unarmed people who are no threat to them whatsoever, and that's the key. It doesn't matter that somebody is breaking the law. We don't want to have an army of judge dreads who are judge, jury, and executioner on the streets, who can't control themselves, who go into a fit of rage, or who go into a panic. The Thailand police didn't do that. Why can't we have American police who don't do that? We used to have American police who didn't do that. It's the way they're being trained. And of course, the way we stop this is by reducing the number of police, by arming the public. We need to understand and remember, as I pointed out before, posse comitatus is not simply an act. Posse comitatus is the power of the community to protect itself. The community should have the power. The police can be there to guide it under emergency situations. When you do have a real Bonnie and Clyde, call out the posse comitatus to deal with it. You don't need an army of policemen. You don't need 60 police cars and 104 police officers firing 137 bullets at unarmed passengers. But what do we have instead? Instead, in this country, we see now a bill that's passed the Tennessee House of Representatives. You would think that a southern state might value firearms and the, uh, the um, right to keep and bear arms more highly than they do. But this is the Tennessee House of Representatives that passed a bill last night that would make it illegal to have a squirt gun. 
a squirt gun within 150 feet of a school. Now, of course, we have a federal law, which I think is absolutely insane, that says that you cannot have a gun within 1,000 feet of a school. But this would uh, be part of a larger bill that would even bar people who have a concealed carry permit from taking guns into parks because I guess they're going to turn the parks into a gun-free killing zone. That's what happens. That's why I don't support them having a ban on school on guns within 1,000 feet of schools because we've seen how that works out. We just saw how that worked out in Kenya. It works out the same way here. Now, in other news, of course, there's an int another intractable problem, not just the police state and the, uh, uh, the police violence we see here, but, of course, Fukushima. It just keeps going. A new article came out today, and it was covered on the Drudge Report. Fukushima radiation has reached North American shores. They point out that scientists at the Wood Hole Oceanographic Institution detected small amounts of cesium-134 and cesium-137 in samples of seawater that were taken, in this case, from Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Now, they try to assuage us each time by telling us, don't worry, these levels are very low. But understand that these levels are, that radiation is cumulative. And if radiation is in all of the seafood that you're eating, then it is accumulating each time you're eating the seafood. And we should be concerned about this because Fukushima is still not under control and because we could have this incident anywhere. Now, this is not something that is new, of course. We have pointed this out over and over again for years since this happened at Infowars.com. It isn't just that they've discovered that there is a, uh, an elevated uh, level of these uh, isotopes. These same isotopes were pointed out to be present back in an article we had on April 26, 2012. Fukushima is falling apart. Are you ready for a mass extinction event? Do you think that was over the top? Well, they were talking about these same isotopes. I said, maybe you've heard about sick seals, polar bears, tainted fish, mutations in dandelions, and so forth. They said that they found 40 million becquerels of radioactive iodine in seaweed. Now, they say, if you don't know how much that is, I say it's quite a bit. And, of course, it is perme permeating and spreading throughout the Pacific Ocean. Now, of course, one of the things they mentioned in that were the sick seals. We got more verification of that in an article in January 26, 2014. University of Alaska scientists say that Fukushima radiation may be making Alaska seals sick. Again, the same isotopes. Talking about cesium-134 and 137 found in muscle tissue from control and diseased seals. They discussed the wildlife health implications from different possible routes of exposure to Fukushima fallout to the ice seals. Now, of course, we also had a story about another effect of the Fukushima radiation. In 2013, October 21st, melting starfish along the West Coast prompt Fukushima concerns. In this story, they said scientists are attempting to find out why one species of starfish is literally melting in the waters off of Washington State and Canada. Strangely, the symptoms have only been seen in certain areas of Washington's Puget Sound and Canadian waters. While the verdict is still unknown, many are pointing fingers to Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant, which has continued to leak over 300 tons of highly radioactive water into the ocean every single day. Of course, that was on the west coast of America. But this is something that permeates through the Pacific Ocean. And as we can see in this story from 2012, May 2012, Fukushima, California tuna have high levels of radioactive cesium. In this particular case, they were talking about bluefin tuna. Now, these were tuna that had migrated from the Japan coast to the California coast. So in other words, they're starting out close to where Fukushima is. They found radiation levels that were 10 times normal in these particular tuna. But then when we look at another story from June 9th, 2014, we see that albacore tuna, which are not starting at Japan and migrating to the west coast of California, they're in the Pacific Ocean, not as close to Japan. Still, they're seeing a tripling in the level of radiation in albacore tuna. Again, repeating the idea that, don't worry, the radiation levels are low. But as they pointed out in the article, you can't say there's absolutely zero risk because any radiation is assumed to carry at least some small risks. And we need to understand, too, that, as I pointed out, radiation is cumulative, just as you see it accumulating in the seaweed, accumulating in the fish. It is also accumulating in our bodies. 
Now stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk to Anthony Gucciardi about psychiatric drugs, some new revelations on that. And we have an interview about the Silk Road case. It represents, I think, a very important issue about the corruption that we have seen in our legal system. Now, of course, the Silk Road trial ended in the conviction of Ross Ulbrich. But immediately after the trial ended, we found out we had two agents involved in the investigation charged with the theft of $1.3 million in bitcoins and with falsifying government documents. So we're going to talk to Ross Ulbrich's mother. They're hoping that they can get the investigation reopened. It is a tale of what the war on drugs has done to all of us. It's eviscerated our rights, it's turned our courts into a kangaroo justice system, and it has corrupted law enforcement. So stay with us for that interview. We'll be right back. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Super Male has the key concentrated natural compounds that my body needed to go to the next level. Today is the day to take the InfoWarsLife.com challenge and to secure your bottle of Super Male or Super Female Vitality. Check them out today at InfoWarsLife.com or give our crew a call at 888 Two five three three one three nine. Welcome back. Joining us in studio is Anthony Gucciardi. And Anthony, I wanted to uh, talk to you, especially with all this information that came out with the German Wings pilot. Uh, as we looked into this, uh, uh, he was suffering from depression. Uh, what he did looked like what someone on SSRIs would do. And I was surprised to find that back in 2010, the FAA, even though they banned all sedatives, all uh, uh, tranquilizers, all other psychiatric drugs, they made an exception for SSRIs. Isn't that interesting? It well, pays to have lobbyists, doesn't it? Of course, exactly. <laughs> they made an exception for their best clients. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you look at this, it, it goes back to just a few days ago, I was looking at the top 10 best-selling pharmaceutical drugs. Pretty much all of them are either SSRIs, antidepressants, mm -hmm. antipsychotics, or boosters for these types of drugs. So right now, if we're going to look at the uh, top-selling psychiatric drugs, and this is from Mental Health Daily from July 2013 to June 2014. So just in that time frame, number one is Abilify, and that's at $7.2 billion, just in that time frame. Wow. And wow. Abilify, here's the craziest thing about that. It can be used as an antipsychotic by itself, but it's really what's known as a booster drug. So what happens is you give someone like uh, Prozac and then also Abilify. Oh. And that's okay. to boost the effects it's kind of like uh, an adjuvant, you know, on the vaccines where you, you stick in the aluminum right, to, uh, right. to heighten the... Uh, and it has off-label effects and uses and stuff like that. <laughs> but this is now like boosting the suicide-linked Prozac. And yeah. if you remember back in 2004, it was a Harvard professor that came out and said that people were being treated like guinea pigs when they were given the Prozac. And it wasn't until then. It turns out in 1980, Eli Lilly and Company, which produces Prozac, knew the direct link to enhanced depression and further suicide. Yeah, so great. this is now boosting. So it makes what you're being treated for, it makes it even worse. Yes, yeah. and then we have Cymbalta at $2.8 billion, uh, Lyrica at $2.7 billion. The list goes on and on, billions and billions and billions and billions. 
It's now a 30 plus billion dollar per year industry. And those are all fake numbers anyway. We know it's much, much higher. And of course, every other ad that you see on television, on Fox News, CNN, all the major uh, networks, cable uh, news, every other ad is some kind of a drug ad. Right. And now, I mean, statistically, pretty much one out of four people that you see on the street are on these. Mm -hmm. So that's why when that plane wow. went down, I figured in my head, sure, he probably is on SSRIs, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. everyone is. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is there's not enough research showing the correlations between people killing themselves, people having ruined lives, because there's no statistic to say Joseph Smith, there's some random guy, for example, he takes an SSRI and then his life is ruined. He has extreme depression for the rest of his life. And you know, he, he, his relationships are ruined. That's not as drastic as he killed himself. Yeah. And sometimes... But, but they do know. They do know that it has very drastic side effects. Oh, of course. And when people want to get off of it because of the side effects, things like sexual dysfunction, uh, other things like that, it, it, the situation that they had, uh, this particular pilot was having problems with his girlfriend, they said. If he wants to get off of that, they have what they call discontinuation syndrome. And of course the FAA recognizes that and said, okay, you can take the SSRIs, but if you change the dosage in any way whatsoever, you're grounded for six months. Is he gonna call them up and say, well, I, I just changed my dosage, I wanna get off of this stuff uh, because I'm having, having problems. They're, they're gonna ground him. So of course he's gonna do it quietly. Perhaps it has this kind of an effect. No, I mean, let's be clear. When I was very young, my parents took me to the doctor and they gave me a really early form of some of these drugs for ADD, of course, you know? Mm. And I felt like a zombie, and my parents immediately realized this is really bad, this is bad news. And I told the doctor all this, they don't actually try to get you off of it, they treat the symptoms. They so, said, well, you, you feel fatigue? We, we can give you something for that. We can give you something else. Erectile yeah. dysfunction? <laughs> Take some, some Viagra, yeah, there's exactly. nothing wrong with that. It's $50 a pill, we'll make plenty of money on it. And then just to go over some of these side effects for Ritalin, for example, here, um, uh, this is from drugs.com, which is the official source for all the real side effects that happen. You know, we have some chest pain, fever, skin rash, terrible bathroom issues, dryness, flaking of the skin, abdominal pain, tiredness, weight loss, yellow skin, tingling pain, slurring of speech, loss of coordination, sores, ulcers, white spots on the lips, severe headaches, mm. unable to see, red and swollen and scaly skin, pale skin, hives, welds, confusion, depression, painful or difficult urination, loss of appetite, nervousness, the list goes on. I mean, it's just absurd. And then we have an article right next to it here. Drug labels contain 70 negative side effects on average. This is a report wow. based on a live science uh, study. 70 negative side effects on average. But what they don't tell you is that it can go up to 525 different negative known reactions. What about that first do no harm thing that was supposed to be part of medical ethics? Yeah, how about 525 side effects per drug? Well, you know, you're talking about Ritalin and we homeschooled our kids. And when we traveled in those circles, a lot of people had taken their kids out of school because of Ritalin, because it was being pushed on their kids. They were mandating that they have to take Ritalin. And uh, they understood how dangerous that was. They understood that they were building a drug dependency on their kids with a drug that was very similar in many respects to cocaine. Well, they probably also understood that 90% of school shootings are linked up with psych meds. Mm. And this is from Jerome Corsi, who was on the show today, Dr. Jerome Corsi on World Net Daily, psych meds linked to 90% of school shootings. Wow. And that is totally official. He goes through the whole list. It's probably 100% in some way. But at least 90% of school shootings are linked up directly with psych meds, and that's just school shootings. So is that why you've got this, uh, this new product that we've got child ease? Is that uh, something that's supposed to help with uh, ADHD? Well, you know, the whole thing is this... We cannot say this is to replace any drug. You mm -hmm. have to talk to your doctor, talk to your physician. I personally would never take any SSRIs, personally. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about InfoWars Life is all these products were created with reality in mind, right? We have the survival shield for super male, for example. All these were created with issues that we know to exist. And, you know, we know what we can and can't say on air. You know what the products, you know, do for you. And the reviews are all up there. Hundreds of reviews just for super male in the mm -hmm. first couple of weeks that we put them up. But I'm really excited about child ease. Now, specifically, as the label says, supports calm, focused attention. We choose what we say on these labels very, very carefully because of the different guidelines of what we can and can't say. And we are boldly stating supports calm, focused attention. And this was created with the known herbs and key compounds that have been traditionally used for centuries and centuries in different cultures around the world because we wanted it to be safe. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important, I think, that parents understand what they're taking and giving to their kids, number one, tastes good, and number two, is completely safe. 
So we took formulas made up by top herbologists and already sold for 20 years by one of the major leading organic-based distributors that works with Whole Foods and everything like that to get rid of the GMOs and the Monsanto garbage and actually give good organic-based products. And secondly, we wanted to make sure that it doesn't taste like crap. Because if you can imagine, yeah. you know, you have kids. Right. And you can imagine being a kid, you know, remember trying to take some medicine that your mother gave you or whatever. Oh, this tastes like garbage. This has no sugar in it. Mm -hmm. wow. It's actually naturally sweet thanks to the fruit extracts and everything in there. Wow. It has chamomile, which is known to be soothing. This has been used. This formula is based on actual formulas that have been used for centuries by different cultures traditionally to calm down their children. You know, and I think there's something a, a lot of people initially – are reluctant to try something, well, it just looks like it's herbs or something. That can't nearly be as good as something that comes from the pharmaceutical companies because that's concentrated and isolated. I know we went through that initially. They try a product, they see that it works, and it's like, wow, you know, this, there's something to this. Just because it's been around for a long time, maybe that says that, that it's very effective. We're talking about chamomile. I mean, we just saw that report not long ago about uh, this, this ancient remedy that they found in Scotland or whatever. Anyway, these historians put this thing together and they found, hey, look, that kills MRSA, you know, which they're struggling with with the antibiotics. Yeah. It's going wild medieval, in hospitals. And so it's like, sure. maybe there's something to this stuff. Maybe that's why it, it hung around for so long. Right, and what you're different. talking about is the medieval time home remedy. And they took garlic, and I, I believe it was garlic, onion, and bile from the stomach of a cow or something, right? Yeah. And it killed MRSA superbugs. Yeah. Now, the reason it actually did that, I believe, in my analysis, has nothing to do with the cow bile. It might actually mess with the compounds. It's the garlic. Yeah, We've known forever that garlic kills superbugs. Right. It's just so funny they happened to study uh, this old ancient cure, which combines different compounds, sulfur-based compounds, which are known to kill superbugs, and say it's some 500-plus-year-old cure or whatever. It's the garlic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we can use these things and right. put it in these products. That's why we're so happy about InfoWars Life. And go on there, go on InfoWarsLife.com, read the reviews. This is real stuff. Just like child ease is real. It's 100% real, and that's why we're so passionate about it and can sit here on air and talk about it and know all of this that we do know and know all the things like olive oil killing cancer cells in less than one hour in a Petri dish. Have you heard about that one? No. That was uh, two months ago. They found that olive oil in a Petri dish killed cancer cells. Really? I'm not talking about reduced, killed it completely. Wow. Yeah. It's just amazing. I, I know we've tried some of these things, especially on our dog. We had a situation. I won't go into all the detail about it. But, you know, the thing I like about it is the fact that we can – Offer stuff that we know helps people's health. It helps you to get healthy. It helps you to stay healthy. helps you to fight the toxins. Even, even though we're fighting an info war to try to get the toxins out of the water, out of the food supply, there's still this lag that happens as people have to come around to it, as pressure has to build on these manufacturers to actually take this stuff out. So you have to be able to do something to for your family, for yourself, in the meantime, while this is happening. And it's great that we can... Fund the operation is the principal way that we fund the operation, as well as something we can offer people. I think Alex said, what was it, not a win-win, but a 360 win? Was that what he came up with? Yes, today? exactly. It's a 360 to. win because yeah. you're funding an operation that you support. You're funding us getting the word out with hundreds of thousands of free articles that you can read every single day that are never charged for. You're also getting a good product, and I would try it yourself. I mean, I've, I've taken it. It's great. I would try it yourself. If you want to give it to your kids, try it. Before you give it to your kids, you'll like the taste. They'll like the taste. And if you like it or if you don't like it, leave a review. Check out what other people are saying on InfoWarsLife.com. So, I mean, we're excited about it. I would encourage everyone to check out InfoWarsLife.com and check out Childies, definitely, because we actually are going to sell out probably within this week. And it's due great. to this, it is, it is what you would call a reserve batch from this company. It is, it is a proprietary formula that's been sold for the last 20 years and known to be completely safe and has all the best certifications and everything like that. But we have pretty much the best batch of that that we decided to get away from the main line and we don't know when we're going to get more of that. This is actually true. Mm -hmm. We do not know when it will sell out, most likely within the next week. So I would encourage everyone to try it now and see if you like it. Great. All right. Thanks. Well, stay with us. Right after the break, we're going to have an interview with the mother of the man who was convicted of running Silk Road. Amazing story. Now they find that there are agents involved accused of money laundering, of wire fraud, stealing $1.3 million, and of altering government, falsifying government documents. You think that might get him a retrial? Well, we'll see. We'll talk to her right after the break. Stay with us.
Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 Silk Road was a website that allowed people to anonymously buy and sell drugs and other things that governments wanted to control or to tax. Ross Ulbricht has been found guilty of being the person who ran that website, and he is coming up to being sentenced. We've talked to his mother, Alex Jones, who's interviewed her because there are many precedent-setting issues in this particular case in the digital realm. There's the issue of transfer of intent. He was just running a website. Was, did that make him a drug trafficker? There's also the issue of whether or not digital evidence can be used in a drug case, even though it can't be used in a banking case. And then, of course, there's also the issue of what constitutes possession of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. But there's also more mundane issues that we all come across all the time, and that is our violation of our Fourth Amendment. Although they find new ways to do this in the digital realm, these are issues that affect all of us. We've reported many times about the government's warrantless search using Stingray. And of course, everyone knows about the NSA and those warrantless searches. But also in this trial, there were issues of documents being dumped at the last minute so the defense could not see it, evidence being withheld, from the defense that could have cleared Ross Ulbricht. And of course, a large part of that is the criminal investigation now into two of the agents that were lead investigators in the conviction. These agents have been charged with wire fraud, money laundering, and falsifying government documents. Do you think that if they're going to falsify government documents, that might have an effect on the fairness, on the justice of the trial? We're going to talk to Ross's mother, Lynn Ulbricht. She has put together a site, uh, freeross.org, and that's a place where you can get to know what these issues are, how they affect you, and also help them in their defense, because this is something that, as I said, is going to affect us all. There are large principles involved here. Joining us now is Lynn Ulbricht. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Ulbricht. I'm, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I know this must be a very difficult time for you. Yeah, it's very, very challenging, but thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Now, of course, there's a lot that's on the line. Your son's uh, sentencing is coming up May 15th. Uh, it's possible that he could get up to life in prison with all the charges that they've added. And, of course, I think it's important for people to understand there was a lot of talk about murder for hire and things like that, but they limited this strictly. If you look at the things that they uh, indicted him, charged him with, and found him guilty of, it all boils down to drug charges and then adding that, adding to that with conspiracy charges. But there's a lot of important precedents about this. I think, as we see now, there was a lot of evidence that was not uh, allowed to be presented. The way they handed the evidence to the prosecutors 
was, I think, very egregious. It looks like they were trying to dump this on them at the last minute, and we can talk about that. But there's also important precedents that are being set in terms of websites and terms of digital evidence. And I want you to speak to that briefly. Sure. And just let me make the point. Um, yes, he was not charged for murder for hire. Yes. And I believe it's a smear tactic. But um, anyway, um, as far as precedent, there are several important things going into the digital age with this case. First of all, most of their evidence was digital. It is totally, you cannot authenticate digital evidence. You do not know who wrote a chat, email, screenshot. And actually, uh, the Supreme Court has thrown out cases uh, based on screenshots. Um, it's too easy to Photoshop it. Yeah. And, I mean, and of course, before we go any further, we need to, to point out that one of the things we're going to be talking about are these uh, federal uh, agents who have now been indicted. And that was never allowed to come out during the trial. And it was one of those agents who was actually now involved in the murder for hire scam, uh, not your son. Yes, That's what the prosecutors are alleging. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Talk That's okay. Yes. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about because, um, yeah, so digital evidence. A mortgage company will not take a screenshot of a bank statement because they know how easily faked it is. This case, by accepting digital evidence, lowers the box standard for evidence dramatically and makes it a lot easier to put people in prison. Um, it's You cannot authenticate it. It's um, very easily faked, manipulated, edited. It's not reliable. And I think That's that really what, kind of highlights what I see with your this particular trial here. And that is that we, we've seen our government routinely ignore the uh, rules of evidence, routinely ignore the Constitution and what the law is in order to make their case, in order to get a conviction. And now we see that in the digital realm, they're even more cavalier about the way they do that. Let's talk about, uh, there's a couple of different issues that the attorney is bringing up to get a retrial. One of those is how they got the evidence about the servers. Tell us about that, because that involves them basically hacking into it. And from what I was able to see, it looks like initially the prosecutors tried to cover up what they did. They hacked into it without a warrant. And when they asked them, how did you find uh, this particular server, they, they lied about it. They said that it was a misconfiguration of the site's CAPTCHA uh, that had leaked the IP address. Nobody believed that that, uh, that technical explanation, and eventually they admitted, well, we just hacked the site, and then the judge said, well, that's okay. You didn't have a search warrant. We'll allow that evidence. I think they said, even if we did. I don't know if they've, I don't know that they've actually admitted. They said, even if we did, it's okay. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. So, um, you know. <laughs> don't have to have but, a search um, warrant. Yeah. A and, um, and they put people in prison for hacking into. Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. So, um, and it's also a question of an FBI agent lying under oath about how he found the server. And then you wonder what else are they lying about? I mean, he said how he found the server and experts all over the world said it was gibberish, a lie, inconsistent with reality. It did not compute. And, so, um, so they went yeah. into this, and they didn't have a particular search warrant for this. They just basically hacked into okay. it. The judge says, that's okay. Even though you don't have a search warrant, even though you hacked into it, you can use that. Now, when they got the physical evidence from your son, they did that with a general warrant. Explain to the audience why that's important. Well, in the Constitution, the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment specifies that a warrant must particularly describe what they are looking for. They can't just go in your house and rummage around on a fishing expedition to see what they can find. Um, by the way, that picture is the worst picture of Ross. <laughs> <laughs> that artist was not facing him and he doesn't look like that. Anyway, um, so, um, we fought the Revolutionary War partly over this. Yeah. It's the basis of the Fourth Amendment. And, um, so it's very fundamental and important. And they used the same kind of general warrant to, um, search Ross's laptop, Gmail account, and Facebook. If they'd done it in his home through his file cabinets and desk, it would be clearly unconstitutional. So for it's on his laptop, so it's not. I mean, this is a very important point going forward into the digital age because we keep more of our stuff on our computers and phones than we do in our file cabinets anymore. Absolutely. But if they don't have to have a, absolutely, if they don't have to have a warrant, this affects everybody that has a cell phone. And we're seeing that now. They're using that with Stingray. They're going before the judges in one case, they went before a judge, and the judge says, well, I need to see uh, your search warrant for obtaining this information. How did you get this information? 
well, we can't tell you, Judge, because we've signed a non-disclosure agreement. And he said, you don't have a non-disclosure agreement with me. Show me how you got this evidence. And they just dismissed the case and walked away rather than showing the judge. That's the kind of contempt that law enforcement has for the rule of law. It's why Barrett Brown, in terms of talking about how he was railroaded in his case, said we no longer have a rule of law. We have a rule by law enforcement. They can do whatever they wish. We need to understand just how dangerous this is, that they can suspend uh, the Fourth Amendment. They can do whatever they wish. You know, Len, when I look at this, we've talked about this before on InfoWars. They started, they broke the idea that you had to be found guilty before they could take your property, going all the way back to the RICO statute. And now we see how they're using civil asset forfeiture everywhere. They're doing the same thing with all of these different rights that we had that were specifically enumerated in the Bill of Rights. They've broken all of these basic freedoms that we fought so long and hard for that we have enjoyed as a in Western civilization for centuries. This is all rapidly disappearing before our eyes. I completely agree, and really I see this case as much bigger than Ross or our family. I see it as, <coughs> excuse me, a, a really important, some really important points here that, um, you know, I'm given the opportunity to discuss because of my son, but I really believe that, I, I totally agree with you, and to see it up close and personal like I have is very alarming. Um, you know, a prosecutor takes an ethical, I don't know if it's exactly an oath, but there's an ethical code of conduct that they're supposed to put the truth over a conviction. And yes. I don't see that that is being honored. Yes, exactly. Because the most important thing, this is why many people have said it's better to let uh, uh, one guilty person go free than to convict uh, uh, an innocent person. Because we understand that once we give these kind of unlimited powers to the government, that is the most dangerous scenario. That's more dangerous than organized crime. That's more dangerous than terrorism. Because we have given that kind of power to a government without any constraint. So we, we talked about now what they did in terms of getting the evidence, how they ignored the Fourth Amendment, how they got a general warrant. They didn't get a specific warrant when they got in physical information from him. They uh, hacked and uh, uh, lied about how they had, uh, had gotten that evidence. Then when they went to court, what they did with the defense was they essentially withheld information until the very last minute. It looks like they, uh, according to the lawyer, uh, your defense lawyer, they gave uh, 5,000 pages of material just prior to the hearing. Uh, ju oh. It's just a couple of weeks before the hearing, even though they'd had that information for 30 months in their possession. They withheld it until just two weeks before the hearing, and then they dumped all kinds of information on them during the hearing. That's true. Actually, it added up to 7,500 pages, and we figured out that's like reading the Obamacare bill more than three times <laughs> in less than 10 days. Wow. Um, so that was, yeah, there was many egregious um, things that happened in the trial. Um, one, of, you know, the, uh, we had witnesses blocked. They were not allowed to testify. Um, our attorney was hamstrung in how he could cross-examine. But one of the biggest things was the suppression of evidence, which has now come out with this corruption. And it was sealed. And what happened was, well, we can get into the corruption, but... Um, they did not want that introduced into the trial because, of course, it cast tremendous doubt on the investigation that there were corrupt agents involved at high levels of the Silk Road for two years. Yes, exactly. So, and before we get to those agents, in terms of the documents, what I saw reported was that they had uh, 145 new exhibits. Uh, they modified 50 to 100 others. And one example here, in the last week, Within three days, they gave them 44 new exhibits. So they didn't give them time to take a look at the evidence. They, they grabbed information, grabbed evidence uh, illegally, unconstitutionally, and then they withheld evidence and suppressed evidence that could help the defense. Right. That's this, pretty much you know, every bit of it. This kind of evidence in the trial, it, it's a moving target. It's impossible to wage an effective defense. Yes. This is complicated information. Yeah. Now, now, one of the things that they withheld uh, that was in uh, some of this evidence was information about an alternative perpetrator. Now, one of the uh, things that they were coming forward with in the defense was, is it possible that he is being uh, used as a patsy? We've seen this happen over and over again by the FBI. Most of the terrorist attacks that come out, virtually all of them, as, as uh, Judge Napolitano and we have pointed out, virtually all of them either involve the uh, FBI organizing equipping and training the people and then busting it at the last minute. Uh, typically, that's what's hap what happens with these uh, terrorist cases with a patsy. 
Now, in this particular case, we find that there's now two federal agents, one of them a DEA agent who uh, is alleged to have stolen $500,000 in Bitcoin, I believe. He was also the one that was alleged to have been involved in the murder for hire. Another one who was a Secret Service agent alleged to have stolen $800,000 in Bitcoin. Uh, they are now being uh, charged for wire fraud, money laundering, and falsifying government documents. But of course, that was not allowed to be talked about in your son's trial. The fact that the agents who were uh, leads and in investigating him were involved in all of these different things, money laundering, falsifying government documents. Certainly that would have had an effect in the trial, I believe. I think it would have completely changed the trial. And I want to put a shout out to Alex because when I talked to him last July, he said, watch for law enforcement corruption in this case. Yes. And he turned out to be exactly right. Yes. Um, these guys, because they had an informant, they arrested an informant who gave them what um, Cashmere Hill of Fusion, she said it's like the digital keys to the kingdom. They had high level access to administrative functions on Silk Road. They had the ability to change the site. They had access to administrator platforms, administrator passwords, the ability to change PIN numbers, commandeer accounts. So when it comes down to evidence, they had the means to manipulate logs, chats, private messages, keys, posts, account information, and of course they would also have a motive to do that, to direct attention away from their own activities towards exactly. perhaps other people. It's been alleged so, that the Secret Service agent, Sean Bridges, uh, after getting the keys to the kingdom from this uh, this person, he was able to transfer the Bitcoins to himself, 800,000. He didn't come back to the meeting the next day. So he goes to a meeting, they show him how you could do this sort of thing. He disappears the next day and so does the money. So do the Bitcoins. And as you're pointing out, if they can steal the money, they would certainly have motivation to change other things to uh, pass guilt on to someone else. Sure. So at this point, how do you separate fact from fiction? You know, how do we know if there was tampering or fabrication? Are there more corrupt agents? There's a lot of information that's still, unreda uh, that's still redacted. The government's not usually very forthcoming with information. The attor our attorneys just found some new things out last week. So I, I think this is a tip of an iceberg. I think it very well could be. And um, I think it would have definitely had an impact on the trial. Um, the reason was we have to seal it because um, it will hurt the investigation if it comes out. So our, the, our attorney said, well, okay, let's just delay the trial. You're wrapping it up in the next couple months and then we'll have the trial. Exactly. And they said, yeah. And they said, no, because the people have a right to a speedy trial. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you have a right to an better. honest trial, actually, I think, is, is uh, a, a just yeah. trial. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, use one right to preclude your due process rights. I mean, well, I think it's interesting uh, when the uh, judge, Judge Forrest, uh, issued the seal decision. She said that any information that be disclosed about the agents, the government agents' alleged crimes, would listen to this quote, result in significant prejudice to the integrity of the investigation. Do you think? Right. You think people might question the integrity of the investigation when these guys are stealing millions of dollars as they're investigating the crime? Uh, to me, that would be a slam dunk. Of course, if I was a juror, I wouldn't do anything to anyone who was anyone who had a website uh, that was engaged in commerce and they're not actually doing any selling. I also wouldn't send anybody to jail for life because there was drugs involved and, and drug selling because I don't believe in the uh, war on drugs. I think the prohibition has done nothing to stop drug use. All it has done is corrupt law enforcement, as we see in this particular case, and destroy our rights. I think this exactly is, is what's happening here is a microcosm of what we see in the war on drugs. Corruption of the government, destruction of our rights, and agents who basically can run wild. Well, it's, it's a complete, I mean, it hasn't stopped anyone from using drugs. No. But they keep doing it because it expands government power, as far as I can see. I mean, that's yes. the result of it. Yes. And makes a lot of money. And, you know, I go to the prison because I visit Ross and I see the effect of this war on drugs on families. And it's horrible. It's tragic. And um, these are nonviolent people, you know, who are serving decades with these draconian sentences. And um, it's really a national disgrace. It's terrible. You know, I, and, and you point out nonviolent and, yeah, and the well, length of the sorry. sentences that, that he could possibly get a right. lifetime sentence. I just earlier in the uh, broadcast, I covered a shooting 
where it was it followed a high speed chase and one of the officers after all the shooting was finished after they'd shot at the car about 150 times one of the officers jumped on the top of the car and shot the two unarmed uh, occupants of the car 11 times in a fit of rage now he's having charges brought against him which we typically don't see in these police shootings but the worst he could get would be 25 years yet your son who did nothing to harm anyone could go to jail for life if this stands I, I, it's just an amazing injustice that we see in the war on drugs and certainly the kind of roughshod practices that we see everywhere in the Justice Department, not just uh, about this uh, particular case, not just about war on drugs. We saw it in the Barrett Brown trial. We see it in every one of the trials if we look closely how they rig the system. I'm seeing it up close and personal and I'm appalled. Well, I'm so, sorry. I'm so sorry about what's happening to your son. We'll uh, keep us posted as to what happens. We'll be watching this very carefully to see if the uh, crimes of these agents should call into question the integrity of the investigation. I think it very much should. Well, we're gonna to continue to watch to see what happens because it doesn't just affect your son's life and your family's life, it affects all of us and these rights that are on the line. Now tell people how they can uh, follow this, how, how they can uh, contribute to his defense. Well, please go to freeross.org. Um, we are greatly in debt from the trial, which was very expensive, and now we need to fund the appeal to push back on these precedents that have been set and hoping, we, we were hoping to overturn. So, and also any other help, advice, networking, um, but certainly donations to the legal fund would be great. Um, it's, a, it's a huge Goliath of a foe we have here, and we're, it's just us. And um, so please help us. Absolutely, I, again, you have my sympathy. I think this is a great injustice, not only to you, but to America, that we can have this kind of a corrupt system, a kind of corrupt law enforcement that is quite evident in this case. Thank you so much for joining us, Len Ulrich. Thank you, David. Well, that's it for tonight's news. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please subscribe there. Of course, if you want to get the information even more quickly every night as it occurs, please support us and subscribe to Prison Planet TV. Your subscription funds the operation, and of course, it can be shared with your friends, up to 20 of them, can watch it each night, Monday through Friday, as it's broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Join us tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.